Now, here's something else you should really be aware of. He knows if you've been sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. But it doesn't really matter because he'll find something on you one way or another. Big Brother is watching you, and he has been for some time now. Whether you're General Petraeus or the general public, the federal government has the goods on you, and they're not slowing down. Our guest, Bill Binney, former NSA senior technical director, has the goods on the federal government, though, and how they're gathering information on every American, every American citizen in the name of national security, whether they have cause to or not. Bill, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. First of all, what a brave guy. Do you... Um, I mean, I know we're not in the Soviet Union. I know this isn't Russia or China, but do you fear for your life being a whistleblower that you are? Uh, not, not really. I mean, I, 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 I feel I'm doing uh, the, uh, the job that a citizen is supposed to do, standing up for, yeah. the, uh, for the Constitution and the rights of people. Now, you worked with the NSA, and uh, you gathered a lot of information, and if I'm not mistaken... Uh, the information you had, you gathered, you dealt in mathematics, right? Yes. Uh, what exactly did you do there? Well, I, was, I worked on breaking codes and data and data systems and okay. uh, other things that are associated with cipher systems, things like that. Okay. And, and so you, you saw a lot. What was, what was the thing that pushed you over the edge and, and kind of prompted you to come out and speak out against the NSA? Well, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> the it's, it really started in after right after 9/11 when they started pulling data in on every citizen in the United States. Uh, this was coming from the telecommunications companies. That's why they had to get retroactive immunity. They were giving uh, data on all of their customers to to NSA to graph or build social networks so they could monitor what people were doing. Mm -hmm. um, but the the real and from that time until uh, actually until 2010, I was working with several others who were uh, uh, with me in this, trying to get the government to address the unconstitutional and illegal activity that they were doing. Um, so, uh, but we were basically totally unsuccessful at getting them to even recognize that they should change their ways and start doing things legally and out in the open and under a, in a constitutionally acceptable way. And you, bring, so, but, you say that it's unconstitutional and illegal. What, what practices? Obviously, you know, these guys are going to have to gather information on people to you know, attempt to stop terrorism, which is obviously, as you point out, the kind of the genesis of this. But is it, uh, you know, how much of it is publicly available data? How much of it is actually illegally obtained? Uh, well, uh, virtually all of it initially was illegally obtained simply because the... Uh, the, uh, the government went to the telecommunications company and asked them for all the customer data. That's that basically, and, and putting that together, building social networks for everybody in the country is a violation of the Pen Register Law, the Stored Communications Act, the, the, and the Electronic Privacy Act, as well as the, the, uh, uh, the constitutional rights of everybody. Plus, it violated the 1947 Intelligence Act and the FISA laws. Um, so, walk me through this, the Electronic Privacy Act. This is interesting to me because I think this is the one that was passed in the 1980s when there was very little, obviously, electronic communication going on. Um, and, or, this, or is this a stored uh, communication? Whichever bill it is, it was passed in the 80s. Uh, it's completely outdated. But it also says that you basically, anybody without a warrant, can look at uh, any email that's six months or older, Correct. Uh, it has to do with data that's six months or older, yes. That, that's free. Uh, they, they protected the first 180 days' worth of data. Right. So how is this not being updated? Obviously now we do keep emails longer than six months. Yes, that's right. Uh, well, <laughs> I think they're, what they've done is they've updated, they, they built this into the Patriot Act, Section 215, in their secret interpretation, which says that they can get any data in any third party like any any commercial data that's held about U.S. citizens, the government can obtain. And that's their interp secret interpretation of the Section 215 of the uh, Patriot Act. And they're using that as secret interpretation to assemble all this data and justifying it through that. And Bill, you're telling us that they're collecting this information on every American citizen? Uh, well, uh, they, they, they can't get anybody that doesn't do something electronically, so... 
That, that eliminates babies in cribs, people in hospice, that kind of thing. The right. Amish. Many of the Amish. Yeah, some of, yeah, yeah. Some of the Amish mm -hmm. that actually right. do Amish things. Right. Now, and then they store, they store all of this uh, information uh, is somewhere. And they, in fact, they're building a new facility that is just absolutely massive. Tell us about this Bluffdale, Utah facility they're, they're building now to, to house all this information. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> Bluffdale is a, uh, simply a storage site that they're building that uh, is going to cost, uh, I think, a little over $2 billion. Uh, and it, of the million square feet that's uh, being built there, uh, 100,000 of square feet is going to be devoted to storage. At least that's what, uh, that, that's what they've outlined. Now, <clears throat> according to the uh, cleversafe.com and, and uh, what's commercially available right now, you can, that, that size of uh, storage space would, uh, would accommodate uh, on the order of five zeta bytes of data which would mean um, to me if you uh, el eliminate uh, things like uh, video being passed across the fiber optic networks and uh, uh, the analog audio that you don't want from people that aren't targets, mm -hmm. uh, then you could store basically um, the communication of about 100 years of the world in that space. I think oh how big that is. I mean, look, look wow. around this studio here for a second. This studio is gigantic. It's 15,000 square feet. Yeah. You're talking about seven times the area of this filled with just yes. computers, just storing data on American citizens. I mean, that is, that's frightening. Well, I, I, I assume they're storing on the world, but uh, U.S. citizens are a part of that storage, yes. Mm. Um, now, let me, uh, let me bring you to General Petraeus. Here's a guy, no one's defending what he did. I mean, he, not even him. I mean, he, all reports say he's, you know, uh, feeling terrible about this at this point. Um, but the, the weird thing when it comes to digital communications is how the military kind of came upon this information that he was having an affair. Uh, it kind of seems like... It, I mean, was it even legal? It, it seems like there. It seems like a lot of snooping, to be perfectly honest. Yes, and it was. <clears throat> it, uh, my guess, it was motivated by something political. But uh, uh, it, it, what it's saying is, they went into the storage of information that they have on Eddie, everybody and pulled out all of his email, and that's what they did also with uh, General Allen. Uh, so, uh, and uh, Director Mueller. Uh, basically said that that's, that's what they've set up to be able to do uh, when he testified mm. to the Senate Judiciary Committee on the 30th of March of 2011 uh, when he was responding to a, uh, a question uh, uh, that was posed to him about how he would prevent a future Fort Hood that is a terrorist uh, inside this country uh, becoming radicalized and killing people inside this country. Wow. Uh, well, <clears throat> he said that... Uh, he got together with the DOD and they've created this, uh, <clears throat> what he called was a technology database where he can make one query and get all past and all future emails as they come in on, on people. Mm. So, so, so that you, says all of it's stored. So what's your solution to, I mean, you mentioned the Patriot Act before and, and I, I mean, I don't, you don't come across at least as one of these guys who doesn't acknowledge that terrorism is a problem or that it's a serious issue that we do need to investigate. What's the solution to stopping this stuff without crossing over the line and affecting American citizens' rights? Uh, well, I think we, we uh, originally, when we were putting together our, our original program, had built-in uh, protections for U.S. citizens or anyone else that you wanted to protect in the world uh, by encrypting all attributes and, and uh, uh, randomly doing it so that uh, positionally things were not the same so you couldn't crib values into it. Uh, but that in itself would protect all the U.S. citizens if they simply did that. Uh, you could not randomly go in and pull, uh, like for example, if they wanted to get General Petraeus's email, they couldn't go into it with his attributes and, and pull it out because they, the system wouldn't recognize it. They couldn't find it. Bill, one of the things that drives me out of my mind uh, is Americans who say, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. Why, why should I worry about it? What do, you, what do you say to people like that? They don't get to define what's right and wrong. It's the central government that does that. Yeah, and so what's right and wrong to you, in other words, may not be right or wrong to the to the U.S. government or whatever government is is surveilling you. Uh, that's correct. You might not think you're doing anything wrong. They may, uh, and that's the real danger here. Well, look at the Petraeus situation for an example. I mean, here's yeah. a guy who's the head of the CIA, our most accomplished general, at least in recent memory. And you know, yes, is it a you know a military crime, and it's still a crime that's not really. Uh, pursued in many states, but adultery is, is, you know, I mean, 
it's bad as it is, I think there's a list of 10 rules that it's, it was one of those. And that would be a problematic thing maybe for later in life. But uh, <laughs> as far as the actual government goes, I mean, that's not a, it's not a high crime and misdemeanor here. You know, right. we're talking about something that's sort of secondary and they'll go to tho- that extent to out somebody who may have had a political issue. That's, that's frightening. Bill, you're a true patriot. Pre- appreciate all your uh, efforts. Appreciate what you're doing. Thanks, thanks a lot. Stay away from polonium. <laughs> it's all right. right. Polonium 212. Uh, I won't all become right. a... Don't uh, have a yeah. glass. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. Uh, Bill Binney, from, uh, formerly of the NSA. Uh, we'll be right back.